empowering. It was absolutely empowering to know <clears throat> that that I was able to use the information that I was taught in Jay's program. And I was able to take that and present it to some people. So one-on-one -on -one, and, and was able to, to show them a program uh, and a business model so that it wasn't just some guy asking for a whole lot of money to go invest in this, real estate uh, project that was, you know, a sure bet. It was a sure deal. No way you're going to lose money. Right. So, so, uh, you know, I've got this great deal. It's just, you, you know, you won't lose anything and you really want to give me your money. Well, I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, it's a much more uh, professional uh, and it's, 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 it's much more in depth. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And on today's show, I've got another amazing guest. We're, we're going to unpack step by step exactly how my guest has been raising private money. And he just started a couple of months ago when well, my guest graduated from Texas Wesleyan University back in 2004. He and his family live out in Abilene, Texas right now, and he's obtained both a master's and a doctorate in nurse anesthesiology. Now, he bought his first real estate investment property way back in 1999, and he did that by using creative financing. And he's remained interested in real estate investing to this day. Now, he bought a few rental units over the years, but it was in when COVID-19 came along that exposed the real weakness and relying heavily on his day job. Now, since then, my guest has been active in real estate education and investing with his company, the EHL Properties out there in Texas. Now, he's most passionate about teaching people how to invest passively in real estate without all the hassles of finding properties, negotiating contracts, rehabbing houses, or being a landlord. So on this episode, we're going to talk about two different topics. Number one, if you're a real estate investor or you're a wannabe real estate investor and you want to learn how to raise private money, we're going to talk about that. Or as I just said, if you're somebody that's just interested in being passive and not having to do everything that a real estate investor does, and you just want to make high rates of return safely and securely, we're going to talk about that as well. Don't go anywhere because in just a moment, you're going to meet my special guest, Mr. Kenneth Webb, right after this. Well, Ken, welcome to Raising Private Money. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jay. Thanks for having me here. Great to see you and uh, great to be talking to you again. Absolutely. So excited to have you here on Ken. And as I said in the introduction, I want to talk about actually two different perspectives. I first of all want you to talk about and us for to discuss how you as a real estate investor, how you have been investing, the kind of deals you've been doing, and how you started raising private money. And then I want us to switch gears after that and talk about the benefits if, uh, you know, we've got some folks in the audience, which we always do, that would be, you know, interested in just being totally passive with their investing. So first of all, Ken, let's back it up and let's begin with, first of all, how did you and I even come to know each other? Well, <clears throat> That's uh, it, it was quite a ride for me. Uh, it, it took me a long time to find you, Jay. I didn't know I was looking for Jay Connor until I found him. And it was uh, it was uh, an accident, but it was coincidental. I, I believe it was divine intervention personally. That's my personal thought on that. Uh, I was uh, looking at some some other types of investing. And uh, and then I 
was actually listening to a podcast similar to this. And Jay was a guest on that podcast. And uh, I heard what he was saying about raising private money. And it interests me more than the original podcast. And I followed the link to his program. And uh, I've been following Jay ever since. Awesome, Ken. Well, I tell you what, you are having amazing results on your real estate investing business. Amazing results on raising private money. So how did you get interested in real estate to start with? Well, it, it's been a lifelong passion. Uh, back in the 1990s, even, uh, I used to see the Carlton Sheets commercials and creative financing. And it, I just have I've always had the real estate bug. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's just something that's just always been in me. And I've, I've wanted to do it. <clears throat> and the creative financing, of course, appealed to me because, well, we were poor. We didn't have any money and uh, I didn't have the disposable income. Um, to invest in real estate. So I, I tried that and I, and I dabbled um, for, oh my gosh, uh, almost two decades, honestly, um, and, and just dabbling in and out of it. And, but there's something that I learned and Jay says all the time uh, that most of the people out there want some or all of the money for their property. And I didn't know how to come up with that money until I found the private money authority. So uh, that's why I've been following Jay ever since then. Well, Ken, what I'm interested in hearing and the audience as well, what did your real estate investing business look like before you started raising private money for your deals? Yes, it was, uh, it was very strenuous. It was very difficult. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Now it's still a lot of work. You know, we always say, well, the things we do are simple, but they're really not easy. It's, it takes a lot of work, but basically I would, uh, you know, look for properties back then we could look in, in real estate ads, uh, uh, in the classifieds or those real estate uh, books that we could pick up in the, in the grocery store uh, several decades ago. You don't see those any, any longer. And basically, you just find the ugliest, nastiest house that you could find on there and and hope and pray that someone would be willing to sell that to you. And uh, and I would go and and try to get some owner finance terms, get a zero down, you know, try not to put any money into into the deal. And um, and I was only successful with just getting a few uh, a few leads doing that. So, um, like I said, I just had a, a few rental properties through the years. And uh, it, it was very difficult um, with that being my only acquisition strategy. Well, you know what I've discovered, Ken, in my own life and also uh, other people's lives that I've worked with to help them raise private money. There was something usually, there was something usually that came along that triggered the person, the real estate investors say, you know, hey, man, I just need private money to do my deals. And like in my case, I started investing in single family houses all the way back to 2003, full time since 2003. The first six years, I just relied on local banks to fund my deals. I'd never heard of private money, never heard of hard money. <laughs> Hard money and private money are totally different. Hard money is typically a brokerage that raises private money to loan out to real estate investors. But all I knew to do was go to the local bank, borrow money to fund my real estate deals. And then in January, 2009, I lost my line of credits due to the global financial crisis. So what happened in my life was I had a dire need to get funding for my deals in a very, very different way that was quicker, faster, more reliable than relying on the local bank. That's what happened in my life. Ken, what happened in your career, in your journey that triggered you to say, hey, I need to get some private money? Well, I would just say the number of leads that I was able to to get, <clears throat> I, I got a lot of no's, a lot of doors slammed in my face, a lot of uh, hung up phone calls. Um, and like I said, it was COVID-19 that exposed the weakness in my, in my job and I'm in the healthcare. And you think that that's just one of the, one of the best industries on the planet. And, and it is rightfully so it has a lot of benefits to it. Um, but 
we were sidelined with uh, all outpatient procedures and you could only have uh, emergency procedures. And I was in exclusively in the outpatient anesthesia uh, arena at that time. So I was completely sidelined. I had employees. I had a business I was running. And um, and I thought that 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 was not going to be taken away. And then all of a sudden it was. And I needed to to generate some some leads quickly. And um, and, and I needed I needed a lot a bigger piece of the pie than what had previously been available to me. And and it was pretty simple to say, if I had some money, I could talk to a whole lot more people. <laughs> so that's what I did. I started thinking, well, how in the world could I find find more money? Uh, because uh, my disposable income has been erased by COVID-19. And I'm trying to keep my business afloat. And I was losing money. I was trying to pay employees and keep their, their families fed. Uh, so it was that global crisis of a different kind. Yours was the financial melt meltdown on ours. Ours was the COVID-19 global crisis that kind of catapulted me into um, into looking for private money and, and to to really increase, you know, my my acquisition strategies that way. Well, you and I started working together a few months ago. You're doing yeah. deals. You're raising private money. So I got a question for you. Ken, how did it feel when you were actually able to break through and raise that first private money and finally realize that it's the private money thing that makes all the difference? Oh, it was empowering. <laughs> it was absolutely empowering to know <clears throat> that that I was able to use the information that I was taught in Jay's program. And I was able to take that and present it to some people. So one-on-one -on -one, and, and was able to, to show them a program uh, and a business model so that it wasn't just some guy asking for a whole lot of money to go invest in this, real estate uh, project that was, you know, a sure bet. It was a sure deal. No way you're going to lose money. Right. So, so, uh, you know, I've got this great deal. It's just, you, you know, you won't lose anything and you really want to give me your money. Well, I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, it's a much more uh, professional uh, and it's, 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 it's much more depth to the program than that. And it gave me, it gave me the, um, hey, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not getting the, the, the words right now, but, um, uh, but uh, I felt like I had, uh, I was able to speak with authority, uh, while I was given the presentation and, uh, and it, and it put my lenders at ease and they understood the benefits and, and they understood how well they were protected so that when we, when we offer high rates of return safely and securely, I was able to just list that right out um, one by one. And, uh, and it's very appealing, very appealing to people, especially in this economy. Ken, you know, um, the way I raise private money, the way you now raise private money, we talk all the time about, we don't ask for money. We're not begging, chasing, selling, persuading. We don't ask for money. So explain right. how is it, that you go about attracting and raising private money for your real estate deals without asking anybody for money. How do you do that? Right. That's very important. It, it takes a lot of stress off of you when you're not out there trying to peddle one deal or another and try to explain how, how this is, this is the right opportunity and the right time and the right moment and all the stars are aligning. Um, so what Jay teaches us is to, is to do that, just that, to teach. And he has his private money teacher shirt on, I noticed today. Uh, and it's because we simply talk to people. We simply uh, ask them about if they have investment capital, how maybe it's performing in the market today. Are they getting the rates and returns that, that they had hoped for? Uh, are they losing? Uh, and then we just simply teach them that we have a way, we have a method that we have a business model that allows them to invest their capital safely and securely. That's just secured by real estate. 
and uh, with fixed rates of returns. And, uh, and it's very appealing to people. And generally, once you pr produce the information and you allow people to think for themselves, you don't have to ask for money. You don't have to sell the program. It's just very appealing to someone who's looking for high rates of return safely and securely. Yeah, Ken, you mentioned that I'm wearing my private money teacher T-shirt. And, you know, I used to talk all the time about how do we do this? Well, we just simply put on our teacher hat and we start teaching regular, ordinary people that have either investment capital, perhaps, or they have retirement funds that they're not, you know, happy with the returns they're getting on the retirement. They're sick and tired of the volatility of the stock market. And I used to say all the time, what do I do? I put on my teacher hat and I start teaching people that I know I go to church with. They're in my cell phone. We go to the Rotary Club. We go to Business Networking International. And I teach people what private money is without trying to pitch any kind of deal. And I teach the program that you alluded to, Kim, what kind of interest rate they can get, how they're protected, how we're not borrowing money that's unsecured, uh, how it's all back with the real estate, how we're doing a very conservative loan to value to where everybody's, you know, protected. So I, it finally occurred to me <clears throat> not too long ago, I said, you know what? I need to start actually wearing a hat. This is right. private money, uh, private money teacher. So yeah, I mean, that's the way we go about it. I mean, there's no stress here. There's no pressure. Um, and so when you are talking with potential private lenders, Ken, there's all kinds of ways we go about that, right? I mean, we yeah. talk about private lender luncheons. We talk about putting on webinars. We talk about one-on-one -on -one visiting. We talk about particular groups that we can join up. All those different methods, Ken, what, has, what have you found to be your favorite methods to exposing people to this world of private money and how they might be interested in becoming a private lender? Well, I would have to say, you know, when it comes down to it, it's one-on-one -on -one because it, it is very important to have one-on-one -on -one relationships with people. This, this is about relationships. Now, although we do have a business model where you can invest safely and securely, you, you have uh, a secured investments secured by real estate, um, it still comes down to your relationship between you and the private lender. Uh, but I would have been scared to death to do a one on one, Jay, I would have I would have not wanted to put myself out there and, and certainly not to ask for money. But I didn't realize that I didn't have to ask for money until I was taught this way of doing it. And uh, but, you know, I also enjoy speaking um, to, to to other larger groups of people. I've uh, I've network in BNI, the Business Network International. Uh, I'm giving a, a a talk at a Rotary Club uh, in just a few days on Friday uh, about self-directed IRAs and how you can use that to, um, to invest. Um, but I would say for sure, when it comes down to it, having the one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship with people, that's what's going to pass, you know, pass the, the test of time. That's what's going to keep your, your, your lenders really comfortable and coming back and wanting to reinvest over and over again. Well, with that, Ken, let's give everybody a free gift that is listening to the show right now. And that is my book, Where to Get the Money Now, subtitle, How and Where to Get Money for Your Real Estate Deals Without Relying on Traditional or Hard Money Lenders. So if you are a real estate investor or a want to be real estate investor and you want to get funding for your deals without relying on traditional funding, you can pick up my book for free. Just cover shipping at www.jayconner.com. And that's with an E-R, not an O-R, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash book. That's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash book. And we will send that to you, priority mail. I'll autograph it for you. And this book will lay out for you exactly what Ken is talking about on raising private money. So Ken, let's change gears now and let's talk with people that are tuning in here to the show that would really be interested in being in real estate, but they're more interested in just being passive. They don't want sure. to go out and negotiate deals. 
They don't want the fine deals. They don't want to oversee rehabs. Um, they simply just want to get high rates of return safely and securely just by being totally a passive investor, either using their investment capital and or their retirement funds. So first of all, Ken, let's talk about how an individual can use their retirement funds. Now, again, as a private lender, you don't have to use retirement funds. You can just use right. liquid investment capital. But my wife, Carol Joy, and I right now, we've got 47 private lenders, individuals that are right. investing in our deals. And over half of them are using their retirement funds to get high rates of returns, save and securely. And they're getting all those returns, either tax deferred or tax free. So Ken, walk us through the process. How can somebody use existing retirement funds to get these high rates of return safely and securely? Yeah, that's that's really important. You know, I've I found and that's one thing I love about this program is that you can talk with just everyday people like you and I who maybe they don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in liquid uh, investment capital sitting around. But I do have people who say, you know, I've been putting money away in retirement for decades. Uh, and I do have, maybe I have 200,000, maybe they have 600,000. Uh, so a lot of people have their money tied up in say a 401k or a Roth or some sort of self-employed plan uh, that maybe they are uh, contributing to. Um, so you can actually access that in order to invest in real estate. And I was not aware of that. Now you do have to be uh, set up with a third party administrator who is, um, is, is sanctioned by the IRS in order to be able to, to fund these type of, uh, of investment accounts. There's only a few in the country and, and, uh, and uh, with Jay, we use Quest Trust. I believe that's their current name. That's uh, right. Quest Trust. And uh, <clears throat> they have fantastic uh, customer service and uh, have been really great for uh, the people that for my lenders ha who have uh, been speaking with them. So so you're not able to just necessarily use your, your current 401k uh, if it's at Merrill, you know, Merrill Lynch or Charles Schwab. Uh, you, you would have to to move some, a portion or all of that over to, um, to a Roth IRA or a 401k or a SEP. They have health savings plans. They have educational savings accounts. Uh, they've got every uh, traditional IRAs. They've got every account that, that you would possibly need or want to use. And uh, you could use any of those to self-direct your IRA into investing in real estate. So Ken, as you've been talking with your private lenders that are now doing business with you, what, what's some of the feedback that you've heard from your personal private lenders as to why they love the program? Why do they get interested? Why are they, why are they now doing business with you? Well, I can tell you uh, just uh, about a month ago, I had one of my lenders <clears throat> who called me and was just talking in general about the economy. And he mentioned, he said, you know, I lost $200,000 in the stock market because the auto workers union went on strike somewhere in the country. Certainly wasn't here locally in Abilene. We don't have an auto workers union. And, uh, and it was actually after that, that he had decided to, to, to come on board with me and to put his money to work safely and securely so that he could sleep well at night and they really like knowing that they have a fixed rate of return and it's backed and secured by real estate. It's something that they can understand. And it's something that not only can they understand, they can see and touch it. It's actually real property. But here's the crazy thing. We can actually insure that property so that if something were to happen, if it were to burn to the ground for some reason, then their investment is actually insured. He had no insurance from the stock market when 
a, a corporation or a board of trustees or someone makes some uh, you know decision or there's some international turmoil uh, around the world and you just don't have to worry about those things. So what I am hearing is honestly, it's just the peace and uh, comfort and knowing that they can sleep well at night and whatever the rate was yesterday, they're going to be earning the same high rate of return the next day when they wake up. You know what you bring up right there, Ken, is such an important point. And, you know, our private lenders that we do business with that are funding our deals, the older they are and the more elderly they are, the yes. more important it becomes to them not to have to deal with the volatility mm -hmm. as far as the value of their investment. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, and that's a big point. I mean, in this program <clears throat> that we offer to private lenders, to invest with us, to invest with you is they don't have to worry about any value coming out of their investment. They know exactly what their rate of return is going to be. In fact, it's just like putting money in a certificate of deposit in the local bank, except this is backed by real estate. And of course the return that they get is going to be a whole lot more than the local bank is going to get. And so that point you bring up right there is so important. Our private lenders, they get high rates of return, safe and securely. It's a conservative loan to value. So everybody's yes. protected. And then Ken, as you just said, the private lenders are actually named on the insurance policy as the mortgagee in case anything happens to the property. So it just really gives your private lenders that feeling of um, safety, that, that peace of mind, that their investment is truly, truly uh, protected and they don't have to worry about losing their money. You know, Ken, um, ever since I started using private money and working with private lenders in all these years, every one of our private lenders have received 100% of every penny that they were expecting from these investments. And wow. of course you're doing that. You're doing the program, uh, you know, exactly the same way. So, here is my bottom line encouragement to our uh, listeners here on the show. And that is, if you're listening right here now here to the show, uh, first of all, I'll tell you, Ken Webb, not another more ethical, honest person on the planet with integrity that says and does exactly what they say they will do. You can count on him. You can trust him. And he's got the experience and he's got the integrity to go with it. And so if you're looking for a high rate of return and you're like sick and tired of the volatility of the stock market, and like Ken just shared, one of his private lenders just lost a couple of hundred thousand dollars because somebody else made a decision in that quote unquote fund. Ken, how about give out what are the best ways or the ways that you would uh, have people reach out and contact you? Yeah, well, I would say, uh, the, the, the best way would be to email and <clears throat> these links will be in the show notes. Uh, there's a, a link to my webpage uh, that has my information on private lending. Uh, I have some uh, a video there uh, about my particular business. I also have uh, two, uh, two things to offer there with Jay and I, uh, one is a 16 minute audio. And then Jay and I actually did a, uh, a live webinar together. Uh, so that is available for you on demand. All of those are available at that website. And, um, and then there's also a calendar link to where you could schedule time to, to reach me. And then also at that same, uh, billproperties.com. If you just, uh, emailed me at kweb at billproperties.com and that will be in the show notes as well. And uh, that's definitely the easiest way to get to me. And I'm always uh, checking uh, those, those web, the, the, the web page and the emails and uh, be happy to respond to you. <clears throat> For those of you that are listening, I want to spell that out that we just had up on the screen. Uh, so Ken's um, uh, email address is kweb, and that's W-E-B-B, kweb, the initial K in web, and that's at B-E-H-L. So that's Bell Properties, B spelled B-E-H-L properties.com. Again, his email address is going to be in the show notes. 
and his URL will be in the show notes where you can listen to those training sessions. But again, for those of you that are listening, that's www.bellproperties.com forward slash private dash money dash lending dash intro. Be sure and check that out in the show notes uh, to get it with Ken. Ken, final words before we close out this episode. Well, I just have, uh, I'm so grateful to have met you, Jade, and uh, I wouldn't be here today, not only on your podcast, but I wouldn't be investing in real estate. Uh, I was able to break through in real estate and really do the deals I was wanting to do uh, because of the private money authority. So I would, I would encourage anyone who is looking to get their deals, to get their business off the ground. Um, I would follow Jay Connor if I were you. Ken, thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Jay. You got it. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And listen, so that we can continue to have amazing guests on here and talking about private money, be sure and share this episode, forward this episode, pay it forward to someone in your world that you know it would make a difference to. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. If you are listening on iTunes or Spotify or any of the other podcast uh, platforms, be sure and follow me so you don't miss out on the upcoming episodes of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor. Looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.